Hello and welcome to Fortress Alaska. I'm your host Dave and today we will do, be doing another Back to Basics video on revolvers. The first revolver was the Colt Patterson. Here I'm showing a Pieta reproduction. I'll show several reproductions simply because most of us can't afford to buy an original nor would we want to use an original. But you can get these reproductions at a reasonable price and you can use them so you don't have to worry about destroying a piece of history or ruining the value of, of an antique firearm. The Colt Patterson was made between 1836 and 1842. It was 36 caliber cap and ball, and about 2,800 were produced. Uh, but however, it was not the success you think. This did not make Colt famous. Uh, Colt basically went bankrupt after this pistol. And then Colt got an offer to make the Colt Walker. Now there's a long story be be behind the design and development of the Colt Walker. You can find that out somewhere else. This is just a quick overview. Here I have an, an Uberti reproduction, so if you should want one, you can go buy one. It was designed in 1846-1847, and it was 44 caliber cap and ball, and about 1,100 were produced, so really not that many. Next came the Colt Dragoon. This is really an improvement on the Colt Walker, and here we have an Uberti reproduction. It's a 44 caliber cap and ball, and about 18,500 produced. This was a very successful revolver for Colt and they did very well with it. However, in 1856, the Colt revolver patent expires and the Colt cartridge revolver enters into the market with the Smith & Wesson model number one. Now, Smith & Wessons had the right to the, the right to Roland White's board through cylinder patent. And Roland White would receive 25 cents per revolver that was produced. That's about $7.66 in today's money in 2021. The model number one was made from 1857 to 1882. It was in 22 short. It was the first bored through cylinder revolver and over a quarter million were produced. Now that 22 short is a 22 short that you think today. The difference is that these were done in black powder. Next came the model number two, and it was produced 1876 through 1911, so this was contemporary with like the Colt Hammerless semi-autos, the PO8 Luger, and eventually the 1911, so uh, you can see it looks pretty archaic by the time those pistols are rolling out, so that's probably why it was discontinued. It was a 38 Smith & Wesson black powder revolver, and almost a quarter million of these were produced. Next comes the Smith & Wesson model number three, probably their most famous, the Schofield. And here we see our Uberti reproduction. These were made from 1868 through 1915 in various calibers, and over a quarter million were produced. Most famously, there was the Russian model, which Smith & Wesson sold over 40,000 Smith & Wesson number three Russians to the Russians in 44 Russian caliber. And the 44 Russian caliber later evolved to the 44 Special and then the 44 Magnum. And then we step forward to 1873 in the Colt Single Action Army when the Roland White patent expires. And Colt produces the Single Action Army and they've produced over a million of them. Now this image is from a standard manufacturing reproduction. It's a beautiful gun. Uh, but just showing you can get other options besides Colt. And there are, of course, much less expensive Italian manufacturers making reproductions of the Colt Single Action Army. In 1873, this pistol would have cost $17.50 new. That's about $2,100 in today's money, 2021. So the $1,800, $1,900 prices you see for these are pretty reasonable considering what they cost in 1873. Uh, then we move forward, in 1877, Colt develops the first successful double action revolver. They were produced from 1877 through 1909, and they produced about 166,000 of these, so it was quite a successful revolver. Smith & Wesson wasn't going to be left behind, and they developed the uh, Smith & Wesson double action revolver in 1880. It was their first double action revolver and as you can see it was $14 new at some point in time. I'm not sure where this the date on this ad. Uh, then Smith & Wesson also came up with the idea of the hammerless revolver. So here we see the 38 safety hammerless. 
Oddly enough, uh, well, this one says 32 Smith & Wesson on the image, uh, but it was called the 38 Hammerless. Who knows, maybe the ad didn't match the information I was gathering. But it was a successful pistol for um, Smith. And if you notice, both Smith & Wesson revolvers are brake actions. With, you can see the uh, where it would rotate on that pin or screw there, just forward of the cylinder. So these were top brake action revolvers. So now let's move forward. Uh, numerous other manufacturers made double action, single action revolvers throughout the years, but Colt and Smith & Wesson are the two major players that still exist today, even though Colt has now been bought by CZ. Uh, anyway, so today revolvers are used for self-defense, hunting, target shooting, blinking, and competition. So let's look at some. Okay, now we're ready to take a look at some revolvers, single action and double action single action revolvers. Now there's a third type of revolver, the double action only. I do not have access to any, so I'll show you the ones I do have access to, which are single action revolvers and double action slash single action revolvers. So first let's start with the single action revolver. This is a modern single action revolver. This is a 22 long rifle. This is a Bearcat made by Ruger. Single action revolvers. The single action means you must cock the hammer in order to fire the gun. The trigger does one action. The trigger does a single action. It fires the gun. It causes the hammer to drop. Now all the guns out have been safe, so do not worry about that. So, you simply by pulling the trigger, once the hammer is cocked, this gun will fire. Now this is a 22, so I'm not going to really drop the hammer uh, as much as I would with the center fire. So, in general, with single actions, you have a loading gate on the side. You open the loading gate, you put it to half cock, and then you can rotate the cylinder and insert cartridges as needed. And to remove cartridges, there's a lever here. You just slide the lever back, and it pushes the cartridge out. It's a long and tedious process to load and unload a single action revolver. But they are mostly used for plinking or hunting. They're not really self-defense guns today. However, if this is all you have or only thing you have access to, it will do a fine job. Now, single action revolvers are often used by hunters or outdoorsmen. This is the new model Ruger Super Blackhawk. One of the advantages of the new model Super Blackhawk is that you don't have to touch the hammer at all to open the loading gate or to rotate the cylinder, I should say. You open the loading gate, and the cylinder will rotate to load and unload, which is a very nice feature. But once again, with single action, the trigger does one single function. It causes the hammer to drop on the loaded chamber to fire the gun. So you cock the hammer, pull the trigger, and it fires. That's all the single action does. Now this gun belongs to a helicopter pilot who spent many years flying throughout the remote wilderness of Alaska, especially during the pipeline days, and this was his survival gun in his helicopter, totally decked out for hunting. A long eye relief scope, muzzle brake, not even a front sight because it's dependent on the scope. Uh, it ha it's been magnaported and has a muzzle brake. And then it has a unique lanyard, and the purpose of the lanyard is you throw it around your neck, and then when you hold the gun out, it's at the exact right length from your eye to see through the scope perfectly. And it's even been modded, modified and bolted on there to have that. So this was his actual survival gun that he carried in his helicopter for many years uh, as he flew all throughout the remote areas of Alaska. It makes an awesome hunting gun, especially in 44 Magnum. This is a big, heavy gun. You would not carry this for self-defense. Um, but for hunting, it's lighter than a rifle, and it fits better in a helicopter, so a good choice for him. Then we step up to double action revolvers. This is Smith & Wesson Highway Patrolman. This was the standard issue sidearm for an awful lot of police departments for many, many decades. The advantage of a double action is almost all double actions today have a swing out cylinder. You just push the button, you swing out the cylinder, you push the, you push the lever, the crane, and it ejects all the cartridges at once. And with a speed loader, you can load six cartridges at once or you can load one at a time but it's much easier to load with the cylinder swinging out and almost all double actions will have a swing out cylinder the big advantage double action the trigger does two functions the trigger cocks the hammer and drops it 
it cocks the hammer and drops it. Now, the big advantage to this is it's also single action. When you want a very precise shot, you can cock the hammer and then your single action trigger pull is very light and crisp and you can make a very precise well-aimed shot. Useful for hunting or other instances where you might have to make a very precise distance shot for say a police officer or something. Now this is a rather large gun to carry for self-defense. It's not something you can carry inside the waistband easily, not with a six inch barrel on this thing. Um, outside the waistband in a good holster, it could be a self-defense firearm, but it's big, it's heavy, it'd be a lot of weight to carry around. Now, a little bit more modern of a revolver is this Smith & Wesson Model 629. Once again, double action revolver. You squeeze the trigger, it cocks the hammer and drops it. If you want to make a precise shot, you cock the hammer and just pull the trigger. Once again, we have the swing out cylinder, press the button, swing out the cylinder, load and unload, and then close it back up. Don't do like they do in the movies where they swing it in, place your hands on the cylinder, close your cylinder. It's the safe way to do it. Uh, this makes a great backpacking gun, hunting gun, uh, survival gun. It's smaller, it's a little bit lighter than the um, Highway Patrolman simply because it's a much shorter and lighter weight barrel. And it is in 44 Magnum, so this is actually my wilderness gun that I take with me when I go into the wilderness. It's actually called a mountain gun by Smith & Wesson. It is in 44 Magnum, and I can tell you, this 44 Magnum is a lot more pleasant to shoot than this 44 Magnum. This gun is not a pleasure to shoot. It is extremely lightweight for a 44 Magnum, and when you carry heavy loads to protect you from bear, this can be quite a painful thing to shoot. It is not a fun range gun in 44 Magnum, but they do make 44 Specials, and that's the much better way to train with this gun. So, once again, that's just a brief overview of revolvers. Like I said, there are double action only revolvers, and that means the trigger's only function is double action. It cannot do single action. So, once again, you have the single action revolver, where you must cock the hammer, and the trigger does only one thing, a single thing. It causes the hammer to drop, firing the cartridge. A double action revolver, the trigger does two things. It cocks the hammer and drops the hammer. Double action. So it's easy to remember and easy to understand. So hopefully that's been enlightening to you and help you learn some of the basics about revolvers. I'd like to thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Share the video. Please comment. And if you feel like you can, I would appreciate support on Patreon. Other than that, I hope you have a good day and enjoy the wilderness when you can.